We find missing people who have slipped through the cracks, and we bring them home. I am going to find your son. Gabby, where is the line? There is no line. I will do anything to bring people home. New case. We make quite the partnership, don't we? I'm Karen and Presser. Here's what happened at Karen and Talks podcast. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. And this show, I I love shows like this. I like one of my favorite shows from the 90s was a show called Profiler. And, I love the Profiler. Um, I love Profiler. I watched every single season, every single episode. And then there were shows in like the mid-2000s, like Lie to Me. Mm-hmm. And I love shows like that where you have there's each episode is um is centered around a specific um storyline as uh, in this one, rescuing people but it helps us to get to know the characters more intimately, you know? And I love that this show is about talking about missing people, but it's also talking about the things missing in these people's lives intimately, what they're missing in their connections with each other and what they're missing meant with regards to like mental health, you know, and even physical health, because like what you mentioned, Zeke, like agoraphobia affects people physically. His, his symptoms manifest physically. So I love that the show is like, of talking about what they need to find within themselves using the, the name found in that context. But you mm-hmm. talked about the casting, and I have to tell to you, I tell you, when I saw you cast Ma Paul Gosselier, I said these people are really trying to get women to be conflicted about hating this monster. So talk to me about casting Shinola and Ma Paul Gosselier because these are two extremely attractive people, two extremely dynamic performers, and the way they play off of each other makes this show work and makes the premise of this woman that we root for holding her captor work you know like that like their interactions are I, I love their interactions but also talk about the whole idea of purposely casting two extremely intera- uh, attractive people in a role like this and having them say you're the animal she's keeping you caged but she's also in a way acting like the zookeeper but and there's something that that you guys do where it's like I noticed that she's always very put together when she goes to see him and that talks about the trauma because as a young person, and when he kidnapped her, he always wanted her to look pristine, put together. And that's something she hasn't broken away from. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't realize it. So I want you to talk about that dynamic and the casting, how all of these things really have to work with these characters and make this show really work. Because I was like, my part, I'm like, he's Bay. He was like Bay from my teenage from my teenage years. Okay. I'm keeping it real. Bay. Be honest. I need to take you with me wherever I go and talk about this show. Um Here's the thing, Ted Bundy was an extremely attractive human being. And that is the reality of it. I wanted, sir, because it's it's sort of so easy. I use the term easy lightly, but it, it, it's it's sort of easy to understand a particular dynamic when the monster looks like a monster. But part of the reason why Ted Bundy got away with what he got away with for as long as he got away with is he was the really attractive guy that girls felt comfortable talking to at the park. He's the attractive guy where if he's like, oh, I need help picking up this folder, girls would bend down and pick up the folder and not think twice. And then they'd end up in the trunk of his car. And so it was important to me that there was a charisma, a charm to Sir, because I wanted to tell a story of almost and and. As the episodes go on and you guys see more episodes and more of the backstory of Gabby and Sir, uh, this will also play a role in it of how you can be around the monster in your life and not realize it until it's too late. And part of that comes from the charm, from the charisma. And so, look, yes, Mark Paul, Paul was bay to all of us. I'm like, I put Zach Morris in a basement and made him a serial kidnapper. God help me. They are coming for me. I know. It's Zach. Um, but when I tell you no one else could have played that role... There's just something about it, you know, when you're casting shows like this, um, you have a wish list of people where you're like, okay, I know this is the list that's never gonna happen, but we just, just so y'all understand the prototype, we're gonna go ahead and put these people on the list. And then you get to your realistic casting. When we got the call that Mark Paul was actually interested to talk to us about it, I thought I was being punked because he was on the list that you don't, you know, it's the wish list, it's the prototype, but you don't really expect them. And so, and I was like, wait, seriously? Um, And he, um, and then he, he, when I started talking to him on the phone, even the way he'd sort of done his research around, um, I'll say serial monsters, because it it captures serial killers, serial kidnappers, all the serials. And the way he'd sort of 
was thinking about it and and understood what I was going for. I mean, it just felt like there was no one else who could play that role. Um, and quite frankly, when your wish list comes to life, you're like, we'll make it happen. Whatever happens, we'll make it happen. Shanola Hampton, quite frankly, I could put a, a, a blow up Michelin man in front of her and this woman would have chemistry with it because she's so dynamic um, that, that, and she was the very first person cast. She was cast before we even brought, you know, domain. She was essentially cast before we started doing pretty much anything with the pilot. Um, and, um, and was so gracious with her time to read with everyone to, she sat in on the casting sessions with us and would read with people so that we could sort of get a sense of the chemistry of the family. Um, but they did not do a chemistry read. It was the the di the sort of dynamic personality of Shinola. Your dream wish list says yes, and then you all say a prayer for the table read. And when I tell you the table read, I think they were two words into the table read, and it was goosebumps. It was all the things Domain and I are texting each other under the table. It was it was one of those moments where I'm like, oh, these two we need to be careful. And it's why in every interview, I'm so clear about, this is not a redemption story for Sir. He is a serial kidnapper. He kidnapped a black girl. He stole a year of her life in physical time. And quite frankly, the next 20 of years of her life in terms of trauma, we're not redeeming him. That is not the story we're telling. However, there are reasons why he's the way he is. There are reasons for why he did, he did it. And there's reasons why there is an unhealthy connection between the two and to me that's just fun television to play and I'm always like I know what my intention is I know what my instructions were in the writer's room I know what my writing was meant to do I know the conversations I mean Domain my tones are like two hours I have long conversations with the directors about everything and then the beauty of television is you release it to the audience and let them experience it however they experience it and so for all the people who are shipping Gabby and Sir I'm like y'all that wasn't me but you also have Shanola and Mark Paul. You have this amazing acting. You have this amazing chemistry. Like, sure, maybe I did add a shaving scene in when she was grooving him. And maybe that one was my bad. Um, but the beauty is I'm letting the audience experience it the way, the way they want to experience it. And that if you're conflicted and you're going to work and arguing with people over whether that's healthy or not, I've achieved my goal. Y'all are talking about the show outside of the show. And in talking about that juiciness, you're also reminding people what the show is about and that we need to do better in society and looking for our missing loved ones. And it's all there as an undercurrent, so. And Demi, can you talk about that, the, the writing for them, for their for the characters? Because, woo, fire. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's that's all NK. Um, they were both attached before I came on. And um, I was like, I think camera test day was the first day that I saw both of them. I knew Mark Paul was Mark Paul and he was very, he's very quiet. He's very, you know, he's put together. He comes, he has ideas, but he's still ready to play. And we talked a little bit about it and yeah, he had done a lot of research, like kind of maybe too much research. Um, I was like, wait, and, you, and he's like, oh, do the children go to bed? I put on all, you know, the Jeffrey, I'm like, what you watch Dahmer at night? Like that's, you know, I, I'm scary. So I don't like to watch that stuff at night, but he was in it and he was ready to play. Um, and then Shinola has this, like, she just vibrates her energy. So together, they're just incredible, incredibly dynamic. Um, it was a lot of fun to film the scenes with them in the basement because they're just so good and they're so talented. And that was when I started to see the depths of where their relationship could go and how dynamic they were going to be together. And I started to get really excited, like, oh, my God, this is going to be you know, when I read the script and I, and I'm usually pretty good at kind of predicting like, okay, that girl's pregnant. Um, all right. The dog's going to jump in the car. They're not going to kill a dog. That's not going to happen. I got to the end of NK script. I, I hollered, I screamed. I had no, I never in my mind in a million years thought that he was going to be in the basement. So to see it come to life in front of me was like, it was so good. It was so, you know, it's one of those things where for me, a true test is when I'm watching the monitor, if it's so good that I forget to call cut, there were many times when I was like, oh yeah, cut. Okay. Right. Okay. We're going to move on because I'm, you know, give me some popcorn from crafty. I'm just, I'm in it. Like, this is good. The two of them together is so good. Um, 
And I also, something that I'm very grateful to NK for is that first line that he says, um, was I right? Was she on the property? That wasn't scripted with him off camera. And I really wanted to just drag it out for as long as possible. Like, okay, she's making the tray. We saw her made the tray before. Okay, wait a minute. There's four locks here. There were four locks in the room where she was kept. All right, she's going in the basement. What's she doing? And then you hear that voice and you're like, huh? And I wanted a beat because I wanted your brain to catch up to what was going on. Because otherwise you would scream the way I screamed when I read the script. And I didn't want you to miss the rest of it. Miss the part where he was like, Hey, we make we make a great partnership. We are not partners, you know. So um, they're they're really magic together, uh, and it's I'm so excited. I'm excited to watch tonight. I didn't read any of the scripts, so I'm watching along with everybody else. I'm live tweeting. I can't wait to see what happens tonight. Great, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you.